Hey there, everyone, Mazarok here, and today I want to go over uh, two Warlock specs. One that I think is severely underrated, but can drop off at later content or higher end content. And my favorite, uh, Affliction. I will not be covering Destruction here. Uh, I haven't played it much in Shadowlands. I haven't had the need to, and with the whole Soulbind thing, it kind of makes it a hassle. At least now, with having two Soulbinds, ju having just unlocked the third, um, it, playing Demonology and playing Affliction uh, is much more doable because of the whole uh, Soul Conduit thing and having to, to swap those out can be kind of a nightmare. So first things first, I want to go over uh, our wonderful big boy Demonology. This is a spec that I think is severely underrated, and I think it's severely underrating when leveling through Shadowlands. Um, the demon is fantastic. It provides a kick with a kick and stun with axe toss. Uh, the damage is good, but I find you don't need high levels of haste for it to be good. Um, in the end, I think affliction uh, does deal more damage. Absolutely. But I think you can deal more demonology, more damage with demonology earlier in the the campaign. I rated for my first two three weeks, uh, two week, yeah two three weeks of demonology before making the, the switch to affliction because there is a severe lack of haste in this game right now. And although uh, stat priority for affliction is mastery haste crit verse uh, versus uh, demonology, which is haste mastery crit verse. Uh, having too low of haste where you cannot get anything dotted fast enough is a big detriment to your damage so i think affliction to be played properly you need a minimum of about 15 16 percent other than that it just feels too slow too clunky and it just it's, it's doesn't work out uh but first we'll cover demonology so my build with demonology has been the pretty simple uh, uh, demonic strength. This is a, a very good talent for massive burst AOE, and this talent here is what allows you to do a lot of damage in dungeons early on. Because if you're starting with affliction, it's tough to do uh, damage because there's so much setup and things are dying fast. Because unless you're doing keys plus six and up, uh, you're you're just not getting things set up fast enough. It's just not doable. There's a lot of big damage dealers: shadow priest, fire mage. Uh, marksman hunters where their damage is up front they literally click a couple buttons and things start dying uh, affliction you need setup time you need ramp up time but with demonology you hit demonic strength your fell guard runs in does a blade storm twirl and things start hurting you can start doing your your ramp up uh, so d demonic strength is a big portion of that and it's always been on my bar uh, anybody that watches my tour gas videos I absolutely still run uh, Torghast and Demonology. <coughs> For those reasons, go check it out. Demonic Calling is a really, really good one because uh, getting the free Dreadstalkers out just kind of makes it a much simpler uh, simpler time your rotation with less casting time on Dreadstalkers. So that way you can pretty much usually always have them out. Maybe every minute I have to hard cast one of them. Um, uh, maybe one of them. It is on 20 second cooldown. But usually I have, after my first hard cast to get things rolling, uh, they're all procs at that point, as long as the fight keeps going. Uh, Burning Rush, Demon Skin, make your choice. No bad choice there. Summon Vile Fiend is my personal choice. I have tried Soul Strike, and From the Shadows is only really good if you're running a full build with the Legendary, Dreadlash, and all of that. And it's only really good in AoE scenarios, your single target damage will start hurting. So I think Summon Vile Fiend is just a really good option all around. Mortal Coil, 20% health. Grimoire Felguard uh, deals tons and tons of damage. And, of course, uh, Demonic Consumption seems to be the better one to go right now. Uh, there is arguments for Sack Souls. And, unfortunately, Nether Portal, as w it does deal good damage from what I'm seeing. Um, and, and from what I've read. The problem is, is the three-minute cooldown. Uh, three-minute cooldowns in, uh, in, in, in this current X-Pack of Shadowlands really, really hurt. Uh, <laughs> They are, are not fun at all, um, and we're get going to get to that with a little bit with Affliction later. Um, so, Nether Portal right now, although it's it's a very good damage dealing ability, it's just too long of a cooldown to, to really be functional. Where uh, uh, Demonic Consumption, your summon, your Demonic Tyrant, um, just... It works it all works together it really works together well and having a two minute big damage uh profile especially when you're on uh lower keys anywhere from like two to five um 
works really well. Usually, on a, especially on a fort week, you'll usually have these two, unless you're, you know, stacked full with crazy DPS that should be running six pluses. As long as you guys are in that kind of gear range to be running those those two to sixes, uh, you're going to have usually your your Felguard for every two packs. So that's that's super solid. Versus the three minute, uh, just it, it just doesn't work like that, right? So that's the build I've been running for Demonology. And I still run it. For Torghast, I run it. Um, and also, if I'm doing a key, if for some odd reason, so I'm eye level 203 right now. Um... If I'm running keys three to six for some odd reason, um, I uh, I run demonology. The da it's just gonna make my life easier. The uh, the damage is way more bursty. It's a little bit more upfront with uh, your 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 felguard dealing just a lot more damage. So that's really nice there. Um, Okay, uh, I seem to have a problem with this working. Should be good. Um, I think there was a little bit of a little bit of a delay in the, the video uh, the video there. So, uh, so yeah, your demon deals a ton of damage. He is the bigger source of your damage. So you use your demonic core procs with the demonic bolt. Never ever hard cast it. Three point nine seconds is simply too long. Uh, Shadow bolt until you get your demonic cores. The legendary I've been running. So what I did first is I built this one. The Hand of Gul'dan has a 15% chance to cast a second time on your target for free. So while leveling, the, I primarily ran uh, a Demonology. I made this one, got it to 190, and then then I started working towards uh, the, the proper Affliction builds while still kind of having this. So now I have it up to 210. I'm probably not going to put it up anymore unless I'm really going to be pushing the Twisting Corridors because I am soloing eight very very easy with demonology it's it's not a big issue so with this here you get a lot more imps uh because hand of gul'dan which you should be casting at at least three shards i sometimes do two to try and quick spam some ints out if i'm ramping up um but that all kind of you'll get the feel for that as it goes on uh so really i think demonology is super underrated i really really do uh if you're playing a warlock uh and you're not destruction you're not a fan of destruction and you're playing an affliction go in with a demonology build into torghast and watch your life get that much easier it really really works uh super super well um little hint though uh if you're doing the maw in demonology and you get to the point with the stygian abductors uh <laughs> your damage it gets atrocious because you can't deal your your demon deals your damage and your demon doesn't follow you if you get picked up off the ground so you're really relying on shadow bolt and uh and demon bolt so just be aware of that um, but I think demonology is a lot of fun, um, supremely underrated, but, uh, I noticed around eye level 190 and I started getting the haste around 15 where affliction was starting to, uh, beat out. So the soul conduits that I'm using now, I'm using the soul bind for Dreamweaver. Naya is best, but Naya is affliction for me. So instead of going through all of my conduit energies all the time, swapping conduits, forgetting to swap them back, blah, 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 blah. I just go with Dreamweaver. You get a nice cheat death. Uh, Fell Celebrity, uh, this is so good in Torghast. Dropping your Fell Domination down to two minutes is uh, an absolute lifesaver. Born of Blood, Hand of Gul'dan has a 20% chance to generate a charge of Demonic Core. That just leaves, so, that just more Demon Bolts. Everything just flows super, super well together. And then Fell Commando, and I really like the Diabolic Bloodstone. It just adds some leech to your health zones, which you should be using all the time anyway. So that is my take on demonology. Really, really good early on. Lower keys. Uh, I find once you do get to like heroic raids, plus six, plus seven keys, um, unless you're really going all in on demonology, I feel affliction is actually uh, better. Uh, uh, and my main build for demonology is drain soul, siphon life, burning rush. Although I sometimes go demon skin if I don't need the movement because I am night fae. So I do have some options to work with. Uh, Phantom Singularity right now is performing super well pretty much everywhere. Used to be Vile Tank for Dungeons, but Phantom Singularity is actually pushing ahead. Mortal Coil, love that 20% heal, man. It's, it's you know, you, you uh, if you go down to 50% health, Mortal Coil, Hellstone, you're basically a full all over again. Haunt has been my big thing right now, although I am going to be looking at Dark Caller builds later because we're going to get to that in a minute. And Dark Soul Misery. So that, that is my main uh, Warlock build, although when I do Denathrius, when, when, we, when we fought Denathrius, I've actually found, in my opinion, Absolute Corruption to be the winner here. Um, 
you just can dot Denathrius dot uh, dot his sword dot all the ads with a corruption and an agony and then you can go over to your what I call stage ads the ones that are off that you can't walk to you need to either gate or whatever but you can the range are meant to pick them off uh, and then you just burst them down but you're just it, it's just a constant source of uh, damage that's being dealt uh, and I find it just works really, really well. The extra corruption uh, is really good for the ads that Denathria spawns after his, uh, his not his penitence, but uh, the cleansing sack thing he does. Um, so he uh, he cleanses uh, one of your guys' groups. Um, a bunch of ads pop out. What I do is as that cleanse is going, I actually do cast Seed of Corruption. Seed of Corruption pops about half of a second after the, uh, the ads appear. Boom, everything has a corruption. Uh, you can soul rot, uh, and then things just die. I think it's a lot better for, it requires a much better pace of timing. And that's when you kind of want to use your Phantom Singularity too, because all of the ads are all around you. All you do is just Phantom Singularity, uh, Seed, uh, Seed of Corruption, Phantom Singularity, boom, big AOE, start Malefic Rapturing, things get, go down. You don't even have to change, you don't even have to target the ads. Like it, it works really, really well. And the extra uh, corruption damage is super, super nice as well. Makes that life just a little bit easier. So there are some, a lot of things to be uh, said about this. Although I find there's less, which is funny because in BFA, I found there was more differences in the talent trees where I had to find myself moving, uh, moving things around a lot more depending on the content that I was doing and what could have been better for what fight. This has been basically it. Um, for uh, raiding, this has been my go-to. Um, it's, it's worked really, really well for Affliction, and I gotta say, I'm a really, really big fan. The damage is super solid, but one of the things with, uh, Affliction, now, here, uh, my haste is at 15. I had it at 18, but I got some armor upgrades, and right now, uh, intellect is king. I did my stat weights, and still, intellect is, uh, weighted at 2.9, versus haste, uh, versus mastery and haste still being around 1.2. So, there is something to be said about that. If you have to sacrifice a little bit of haste uh, to get some intellect, it's probably worth it. But you need to make sure that the class is still playable. Like I said, under 15% haste for me, affliction is just not playable right. Your GCDs aren't fast enough. Your casts aren't fast enough. Uh, you're, and since you're a ramp up class, if your damage was up front, if you click one GCD and Agony just dealt all of its damage in one shot, sure. But you need to get through Agony, Unstable Affliction, Corruption, Siphon Life, Haunt. And then if you've got them up, Phantom Singularity, Soul Rot. But if everything's dead by the time you get to Soul Rot, there's, there's no point. You know, Seed of Corruption is a, is a long cast. 2.2 seconds. I know Hunters like to complain that their aim shot cast is too long. But, I mean, Destruction Warlocks have Chaos Bolt. It takes a while to cast. We've got Seed of Corruption. If we want to get our Corruption Dot on absolutely the entire mob, we have to wait that 2.2 seconds. And with a low amount of haste, I mean, I've seen that go up to 2.5, 2.6 second cast at, you know, 10%. That half second, I mean, it, when you're it, with a ramp up class, um, it matters. It matters a lot. So, uh, so what I do now is right now I'm running personal food for raids to try, just give, give my haste a, a little boost there. Just makes the class feel better for me. Um, I know my damage would probably be higher if I played more right, I guess, uh, with, uh, the, the int buff food, but I, I like the way the extra haste feels. It feels better in my hands. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. If you don't like the way a class is feeling with when, when you're playing it, um, you're gonna do bad damage. It's not gonna. It's just a, a, a revolving circle. Um, so that's the big thing there. Um, now I have tried very, very hard and have worked. Uh, and I do gotta put out a big shout out to D, who has uh, one of our healers in a raid. Uh, she has been giving me power infusions uh, whenever she can, and they line up super nice with Dark Soul Misery. Um, and so. 30% haste plus I think it's 25 from uh, power infusion. You you get extra from it. Now here's a little tip that we learned: power infusion and bloodlust do not stack. They do not work together. Although uh, bloodlust and dark soul misery do work together because it is a personal cooldown that you get the talent in versus power infusion being baseline for priests. 
So if you have a priest in your raid, not a shadow priest, that's their own personal cooldown, but a discipline or a, uh, a holy priest, uh, try and make friends with them. Try and get them to be the power infusion, but to do that, you should be top damage because why are they going to give extra um, boost to uh, to someone that's lower on the totem poles? It doesn't make sense. So uh, work with your spec. Uh, get to know it make it feel good there's a lot of dot damage that you need to uh need to be aware of and dot management is a big thing knowing when to malefic rapture spam uh so that's kind of a setup that i'll do so uh right off the right off the gate my rotation is agony and stable affliction corruption siphon life haunt phantom singularity soul rot my trinket i have the glyph of assimilation so i'll do that on single target on uh i have the imperial ordinance for aoe uh, I sometimes do equip the inscrutable quantum device. All depends on kind of what I'm doing, uh, but work with it. And then if I were not bloodlusting, even if we are bloodlusting, I do dark glare and dark soul misery. By then you should at least have five shards. Most of the time I'll just be getting there. Uh, like I said, that haste is making things a little bit quicker for me. I'm getting all of those dots set up. You malefic rapture spam until you got not, nothing left drain soul a bunch. Now, another thing that I have been doing as well, uh, I have been testing it. I just kind of forget sometimes because you don't want to shard cap for too long. Hit them with a drain soul. Uh, just hit them with a quick drain soul. One dot. Uh, get that shadow embrace going. Uh, it's a big, big help. Um, and then malefic rapture spam. But then what I'll do is if shard gen is low, and it does happen because it's, it's kind of a questionable uh, uh, proc off agony, whether you will gain a soul shard. Um, if shard gen is low, I will keep doing the drain soul keep up keep dots keep everything going until i get a phantom singularity or soul rot up if i still only have two shards by phantom singularity like i said i don't know what's going on lately but for the last three weeks i feel like soul shard generation has been like nerfed or something because i'm not getting anywhere near as much as i used to um it kind of hurts at times uh so i'll wait until i have a phantom singularity up by that point if i have three i'll spam not waiting for soul rot i'll spam get that extra damage in uh but if i only have two I'll wait for soul rot by then I should have three or four uh, if not if I get to four I'm gonna spam anyway whether uh, phantom singularity or, or soul rot is a thing and during a fight uh, spreading agonies getting as many agonies on things that you can very very important during Huntsman Ultimore what I do is uh, I start on Ultimore I'll place a curse of weakness on him from the tanks because I am a good warlock like that uh, <laughs> I will agony corruption siphon life then I will move over to his uh, to Margor, and which I will then do my full rotation on Agony, Unstable Affliction, Corruption, Siphon Life Haunts, Phantom Singularity, Soul Rot, Trinket, pop my cooldowns, uh, and just go to town. Um, and I will upkeep Agony on uh, on Altimore as best as I can, as much as I can, because having more Agonies means having more soul shards so uh keep that in mind more things you can have agony on the better a little tip for huntsman ultimore by the way uh don't use phantom singularity on bargast uh because it deals that big aoe damage and uh, once they polymorph the shade it can still damage them out of it i've learned that once never did it again just keep that in mind um so once you get to that end game once you get to fort weeks once you get to tyrannical you're gonna see that ramp up is so worth it you're gonna be low on the totem pole on the damage uh it's just it's not going to be fun for the first ramp up of the pack uh because you're going to be like what the hell then you will cast five malefic raptures in a row and you will see yourself <laughs> climb up to number one so end game right now i think night fey i did start with uh, necro lord i made the switch over to night fey uh soul rot is so entirely worth it if you want that stupid crazy uh, affliction damage go night fay so that is my thing there i stream on twitch every tuesday thursday and saturday uh we might have done what instagram okay my uh i stream on twitch every tuesday thursday and saturday come on by and and check that out uh rhyme of the frost main campaigns on sundays uh if you have any questions on warlocks come on hit me up there i'd be happy to hear from you aside from that i hope you guys are enjoying shadowlands as much as i am, as much as I am and you guys are having yourselves a great day bye